hello and welcome to this second tutorial on saving a shot. In the previous tutorial we took a, an original uh, clip, let me just uh, go through it and turn off the vignette, select the layer and turn off our effect. This was how the original clip looked with this terrible orangey yellow hue to it. We've got rid of that hue and made the shot look a lot more realistic simply with some automated tools in Color Finesse. We didn't actually have to fiddle around with anything ourselves and then we simply added in a vignette to take people's attention away from the edges and keep their attention on the actors. However, we have a problem, and the problem is this wretched bucket. It's bright red and it's way beyond legal broadcast limits. So we need to desaturate the bucket without affecting anything else in the shot. How are we going to do that? Well, to actually make this work, we're gonna go back to Color Finesse. So we select our layer, open up Color Finesse, and go back to the full interface. Give it a moment to load. And right at the bottom, or second to bottom, we've got something called secondary. Because what we want to do is a secondary color correction. Now, secondary color correction looks at the whole image to start off with, and then you define an area that you want to affect. So for this particular shot, we're going to define a color range that we want to affect. And we're going to say to Color Finesse, I want you to change the color or adjust this color range and not affect anything else in the shot. So in effect, if you like, I'm creating a mask over the whole thing. To start off with, everything is affected. And then I'm going to use the tools in secondary color correction to define one specific area that must be affected where all the rest can be unaffected. So I'm going to create a mask around this bucket, if you like, using the secondary color correction tools. It's a fairly simple process, but it's hugely powerful, particularly when you've got some real issues with bits and pieces. This bucket, firstly, is beyond broadcast limits. You can see from the vector scope here, it's way beyond the square, which means it's way beyond broadcast limits, so we need to desaturate it. But the other problem is it draws people's attention away from the actors. I want to take it down quite significantly, way beyond this maximum level, just so that people are not drawn to the bucket and away from our actors. So how do I do it? Well, I've clicked on the secondary color correction tab and I now have six slots for different color correction, which means I can color correct six different items in this one shot, which I think in itself is pretty amazing. We're actually going to just affect one area. So we've got slot A and we have four sample ranges that we can select. So four colors. Now, actually, if you look at this bucket, you'll see that there are many different versions of red. There is a deeply shadowed red here. There is a highlighted red here. There's a, a, a bright red here, and there's a mid-tone red here. So there's at least four. And what we want to do is get as much of this bucket as we possibly can. So how do we do it? Well, we click on the color picker, and then we decide what we're going to start with. I'm going to start with this, this highlighted red just to the right of the um, this, this little feature. So let's just click here, and it's brought in a sample of the red. Now, um, I can't see any difference. How do I know if it's affecting anything? Well, we can go down to this little area at the bottom. We've got a number of options. We can look at how it's going to desaturate, we can look at a mask, or we can look at alpha. Mask isn't going to work for what we want, so the two that could work for us are desaturate and alpha. If I click on desaturate and I show preview, it's going to show me that the area that it is going to desaturate is just this area here. So I need a wider profile. You need to click off show profile because if I now take this color sample and I was to do it, well, I want to affect this area while it's in desaturate is on. I actually added a gray, which is no good to anybody. So you need to turn off desaturate, click on the picker and choose the next area. Now I want this mid-tone red here. You can see I've got a much darker red in here and I can show preview. I've got a lot more of the bucket. Brilliant. Click off show preview. Click on the next one. I'm going to go right for this shadow right here. Click on the shadow. That's a lot darker still. And let's look at the preview. That's quite a wide area. And then for the last one, I think I'm going to go for this highlight red here. So let's click on the picker and go for the highlight red. It's gone much, much brighter. Let's look at the end result. Now, you know what? This area here is not very well represented. So I'm going to change this second picker and I'm going to try and pick more in this area here. So I'm going to undo show preview, click on the picker and go a little bit more in here. Let's change the color and now let's have a look at the preview. 
not bad it's getting closer I might still try one more time by picking this picker and going a little bit further across let's try that yeah that's a lot better you're getting much more of it and in fact what I might do is I might bring this shadow now in and just come a little bit here because these shadows at the edges aren't too much of an issue for us so let's take this shadow one and let's just pull it forward to this area here so turn off show preview take our shadow one and just bring it in just a tad to say there have a look there you go we've got a really good range however we can adjust that range with these bits and pieces down here these sliders I can change the chroma tolerance so if I pull that right up you'll see what's happened I'm affecting all kinds of reds throughout the whole shot because everything that's bright red is going to be desaturated so maybe I don't really want to play with the chroma tolerance too much you can see in the vector scope I'm adding an awful lot more bits and pieces in and really the issue I want to deal with is this one here so I'm going to control Z a couple of times to get that back to how it was um, what I could do is I could do the luma tolerance so pull the luma tolerance out that's actually increasing the range on the bucket making it wider not bad but actually again that's not really what I want to do take that back what I really want to play with is the softness and I'm going to pull the softness out and you'll see that that brings in most of the bucket really well now I have to say other areas are affected so I've got a red sliver down here and I've got red here got red over here so other bits and pieces have been pulled out but I'm definitely affecting the area that causes us most problems now let's look at the whole image so take off show preview and to desaturate the area that we have chosen it is as simple as going to the saturation slider and pulling it down and look at that that's broadcast safe and I'm going below broadcast safe and I've pulled it down so let's look at the original source bright red results source results and you can even play with the gain and the gamma and the pedestal and the hue you can change the hue of the whole thing entirely for instance if you want to make it bright green or purple you can choose the hue you can see it moving around here in the vector scope we don't really want to do that for now the only problem we have is that we have affected other things so for instance the red of this sleeve here is gone and some of the other bits and pieces this is where the beauty of after effects layers comes in so we've done our reduction we've made it look far better so we can just go OK now what we want to do is we actually want to duplicate this layer so we do control D to duplicate it or command D on a Mac now we need to think about this we want the top layer to desaturate the bucket but we want the bottom layer not to desaturate the bucket so let's choose the top layer and let's draw a mask around the area we want to affect so let's take our pen tool and just quickly draw a mask around the area and zoom out a little that we want to affect there you go so that's just affecting the bucket now if we turn off the bottom layer, you can see that that's the only area that's going to be affected we might want to feather that but we're not going to do that at the moment now I want to choose the bottom layer and go back to my full interface and I need to turn off secondary color correction so this is the bottom layer so the mask that we've just made is sitting over the top of it but it's brought all the color back for the other bits and pieces because I've turned off secondary color correction and I'm going to click OK on that and all of a sudden the red has returned to the other bits and pieces and it's only affected the bucket because if I turn the bucket off you'll see that the layer underneath is still bright whereas the layer on top has got the secondary color correction applied so that's how you can just affect one simple area with secondary color correction and bring the color back for all the rest of your shot well I hope you found this useful color correction is an incredibly important part of the video editing workflow and to know that you have such incredibly powerful tools through this synthetic aperture color finesse in After Effects means that you can do color correction in exactly the same way as you would in a video editing package right here in After Effects. My name's Andrew Davis. Thank you for watching. Mm -hmm.